Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to BBC News. The government has given the go-ahead for the construction of a third runway at Heathrow Airport, in preference to expansion at Gatwick. The Transport Secretary, Chris Grayling, says the Heathrow plan is the right one for the whole country and shows the UK is open for business in the wake of the vote to leave the EU. But a final decision is at least a year away. A public consultation will now be held, followed by a vote in the House of Commons. Local councils have promised to continue the fight in the courts. The Conservative MP, Zach Goldsmith, has promised to force a by-election. And the Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, insists the wrong way is in the wrong place and can't be delivered. Our transport correspondent, Richard Westcott, has the latest. He throws at full throttle all the time. From 4.30 in the morning till long into the night, ferrying 75 million passengers and more than a quarter of Britain's exports by value. They can't squeeze in more flights, so the government's cleared it for expansion. It's significance for jobs, for an economy which works for everyone, for passengers, for the global importance of our country, for the environment and for people affected by expansion. And also, Mr Speaker, to send a very clear message today that this country is open for business. Yeah. So what have they agreed to? Well, here's Heathrow today, two runways north and south. The third runway will be slightly above them, up here. Harmonsworth will be one of the three villages partly flattened to clear a path. It's got a jumbo price tag of nearly £18 billion. Will create around 77,000 new jobs but destroy nearly 800 homes. Well, you can see just how busy the airport is. The aircraft queuing up behind me. That's why they say they want a new runway. But that noise, that's exactly why the idea of getting bigger upsets so many people. Five miles away, leafy Teddington's not officially blighted by Heathrow noise, but for a third of the year, they get this. Last night our child was woken up at just past midnight. Woken again this morning at 6 a.m. Last two weeks. Every day. Every minute. Residents say it used to be okay until a couple of years ago when planes suddenly began flying lower. They plan to challenge expansion in the courts. I know people who are having to move after 30 years of living here because they cannot cope anymore. They're going around their homes with noise-cancelling headphones. How can that be acceptable? They're more relaxed about the plans on this tea plantation in Cornwall. They can't hear the planes, but they can feel the benefits. A third runway at Heathrow for all of us in the southwest of England producing really smart luxury brands would be fantastic for export. We'd be able to reach really good markets directly and quickly and with a connecting flight into Newquay that would be the business. The government picked a favourite today but MPs won't vote on the scheme for another year. That gives Heathrow critics like Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson plenty of time to air their views. Are you still going to oppose Heathrow Boris? <laughs> yes you are. With so many legal and political challenges ahead, some doubt plans to grow Heathrow will ever get off the ground. Richard Westcott, BBC News. Well, let's go to Heathrow now and speak to Willie Walsh, who is the chief executive of IAG, which of course owns British Airways, which operates out of Heathrow and Gatwick and elsewhere. Uh, Willie Walsh, is this the right decision for the economy, for the country? Well, I have to say I welcome the decision by the government. I think it's important that uh, the question mark around where the runway is going to go has finally been addressed. And um, without question, the economic argument for Heathrow is significantly stronger than Gatwick. But I listened to your report there. Uh, there are serious issues that do need to be addressed about the environmental conditions that the government have placed on the expansion of Heathrow. Uh, so you have particular concerns about what then? Well, I'm pr primarily concerned about the cost of expansion. Uh, we believe that the airport can be expanded within the conditions set down by the government on environmental grounds, uh, but we have serious doubts as to whether Heathrow can actually build an efficient 
third runway in a cost-effective manner so that passengers are not being fleeced by the charges uh, associated with funding the uh, expansion of Heathrow. So I'm pleased that Chris Grayling today has made clear that the expansion can only go ahead if the charges for passengers at Heathrow are capped at today's level. I think that's a very, very significant development. And have you thus far been given an assurance that they will be capped? The only assurances I have heard are those that you've heard yourself publicly from the airport, from John Hullin Kay and the new chairman of the airport. I, I think we have to go further than that because, uh, let's be fair, Heathrow have made a lot of promises in the past that they haven't kept. Uh, so it's very easy to give these commitments. It's going to be very difficult to actually deliver on them. But I can assure you we're going to be there to make sure Heathrow does deliver. And I'm very pleased that the government has made this a condition uh, associated with the go-ahead for the expansion of the airport. There is still a long way to go. We've got the public consultation to come. It's a good year before MPs vote on this. Uh, I mean, do you have confidence that, that, as someone who is such a major player at Heathrow already, that this is actually going to happen? Uh, I think it's more likely to go ahead today than it would have been under a David Cameron-led government. I think you've got a government who clearly are determined to demonstrate that the UK is able to trade internationally now that the decision has been taken to leave the EU. So I think the conditions today are different. Uh, but I, I share your concern that there are still serious issues that need to be addressed and there is a long way to go. But, but does it for you, that this decision, send out that message that Chris Grayling says he wants to send out, that, that Britain is open for business irrespective of the result of June's referendum? Is that a factor for you? I, I think it is a big factor. I think the government does need to demonstrate that following on from the decision to leave the EU, that the UK is willing, ready and able to trade internationally and to expand our links to other economies uh, now that the links with the EU are going to be challenged. But the fact that, it, assuming it goes ahead, that it will all be a very, very long project, what, 2025 at the earliest? Uh, do you, uh, what about, what's your take on the argument that says this just allows other significant players outside of this country to steal a march on us. You look at Paris, Frankfurt, other airports that I'm sure you could name. Does, does this give them time to beef up their offering? I, I warned 10 years ago that uh, the UK was going to get left behind if we didn't face up to these decisions back then. Uh, you can argue that we've wasted 10 years debating the issue. Uh, I'm not saying we're wasting time debating the issue now because I think it is important that the consultation announced by Chris Grayling in Parliament today is uh, done in a fair and transparent way. This is a serious issue and does need to be debated. But we have been losing ground without question. Heathrow has now slipped down the world rankings and will slip further before a third runway is built. Uh, just one quick final point, if I may. Do you take a view on what people living in the Heathrow area must be feeling? There will people be people who will lose their homes if this goes ahead and others who will put up with uh, even more than they put up with now at, some of them would argue, uh, because of the, the sort of policies that airlines such as yours operate. Well, I, I think it is an issue that must be addressed. I think these people need to be treated fairly and they need to be compensated. I live in Teddington. I heard your report where you were interviewing a resident in Teddington, so I know what it's like. And uh, it's a serious issue. Uh, I'm not going to try and gloss over it and convince people that they don't need to be concerned. Uh, I think aircraft are getting quieter, or if you prefer to put it more honestly, they're getting less noisy because uh, they clearly are noisy. And this is an issue that uh, does disturb residents. So I think residents in the area affected by this expansion should be compensated and should be compensated properly and should be dealt with honorably. And I think this is an issue that Heathrow will have to face up to because their commitments in the past, uh, I think, have been a bit hollow. So I'm pleased that, again, the government has been uh, quite clear in relation to this issue. Uh, and I think we all uh, in the industry, both airlines and airports, need to face up to this in an honest manner. Willie Walsh, the chief executive of IAG, which owns British Airways. Thank you. Well, there's strong opposition from people who live close to Heathrow, as we've been hearing campaigners fear that the village of Harmonsworth will now be demolished. Frankie McCamley has been listening to what the residents have had to say. Just two miles from Heathrow, Harmonsworth is usually a quiet village. But today, there's only one thing people are talking about. 
we were optimistic. Obviously, there are many that are very tired. They're very tired of the campaign. It's been going on for some of these 20, 30 years. Um, we have, we're have we very optimistic that the uh, local council's uh, legal challenge will be successful. It's worked in the past, so we're hopeful for that. The decision to build a third runway at Heathrow means half this village could be flattened. As the decision was announced, emotions were high. Some say no matter what, they will not leave. And when it comes to your home? Well, that's it, if I mean it. Others, though, do see the benefits of a bigger airport. And since I've been living in this area and working at Heathrow, I've, uh, I've witnessed the construction of Terminal 4, then I've seen Terminal 5 go up. And the debate for a third runway has been going on for about 20 years. You know, it's, it, it's always going to be just around the corner. And, I mean, I sympathise with the people who want to stay in this village and keep the community together because I love it here. But the airport is always going to have to expand. Opinion on this street is somewhat divided. This is one of many that are going to be affected. Some residents are happy for their houses to be bought up and for them to move on. Others are completely against the move. The one thing that everyone agrees on is that if this third runway at Heathrow goes ahead, most of these houses behind me are going to be demolished. 783 homes are set to be demolished, but some historical buildings here have been saved. A grade one listed barn and an 11th century church. It's not just here though, a mile away, the whole village of Longford could be demolished. But as the decision is not yet set in stone, some residents here say they still have hope and will keep fighting for as long as it takes. Frankie McCamley, BBC News.